In the depths of history's darkest shadows, there lies a painful truth that we must confront. Within this harrowing tale, we discover the unimaginable suffering endured by African men who were enslaved and subjected to the unspeakable whims of their white masters. In this video, we will uncover five chilling and heart-wrenching ways in which these men were forced into unimaginable acts of indecent exploitation, their sense of worth and dignity trampled upon in the name of dominance and control. Before we get right into the video, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel to keep informed of our eye-opening black narrative. Number 5. Rape One significant aspect of the abuse experienced by enslaved African men was the rape committed by male slave owners, merchants, and overseers. These acts occurred both in the United States and in the Caribbean, where the slave system was prevalent. Enslaved men were often raped on ships during the transatlantic journey, as well as at secret sex farms and seasonal plantations owned by homosexual slave owners. Due to the pervasive social norms of the time and the existing power dynamics, these men faced numerous barriers to reporting their abuse. They often hesitated to voice their experiences, fearing retribution, further punishment, or being disbelieved. Furthermore, the notion of enslaved men being raped by other men, especially those who were married or had multiple partners, was met with skepticism and disbelief by society. Lack of physical evidence further compounded the issue. Unlike enslaved women, who could become pregnant as a result of sexual violence, Enslaved men did not bear visible physical signs of abuse or the ability to conceive. This lack of tangible evidence contributed to the dismissal and disbelief of their experiences. Despite these challenges, accounts and testimonies have emerged to shed light on the extent of the indecent exploitation endured by enslaved African men. These narratives reveal that many of these men were forced to engage in sexual acts with their masters' wives when the masters were absent. White mistresses, often driven by notions of racial superiority and the desire for physical pleasure, would exploit the physical strength and physique of African male slaves for their own sexual gratification. Number 4. Buck Breaking The practice known as buck breaking was a particularly cruel and sadistic method employed by white supremacists and slave owners to assert dominance, humiliate, and subjugate enslaved men. Buck-breaking was prevalent in the Caribbean and other parts of the Americas where slavery thrived, especially during periods of increased slave rebellions. The objective of this brutal practice was to strip enslaved men of their dignity, emasculate them, and instill fear among the slave population. By subjecting them to public sexual abuse, the white oppressors sought to degrade these men both physically and psychologically. The process of buck-breaking typically began with the public humiliation and physical punishment of the enslaved man. Stripped naked, he was subjected to severe floggings in front of an assembled crowd, which often included other slaves. This public spectacle served as a means to dehumanize and debase the individual, reducing him to a mere object of amusement and terror. Following the flogging, the enslaved man would be raped by a white man, often the slave owner or a designated buck-breaker. This act of sexual violence was intended to assert dominance over the enslaved individual, reinforce the power dynamics of slavery, and send a chilling message to other slaves who dared to challenge their oppressive conditions. The accounts of enslaved individuals who survived this horrifying ordeal reveal the immense psychological trauma they endured. Sons were forced to witness the brutal rape of their fathers, forever scarred by the harrowing image of their patriarchs being reduced to objects of sexual abuse. One notable account that sheds light on the practice of buck-breaking comes from the narrative of Frederick Douglass, a prominent abolitionist and former slave. Although he did not personally experience buck-breaking, he witnessed its occurrence and eloquently described the brutalities inflicted upon enslaved men in his autobiographical works. His story, Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, an American Slave, provides a compelling first-hand account of the dehumanization and exploitation endured by enslaved African men. Harriet Jacobs, another enslaved African-American woman, penned Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl, which also exposes the sexual abuse inflicted upon male slaves. While she does not explicitly mention buck-breaking, she speaks to the systemic and pervasive nature of indecent exploitation within the institution of slavery. The devastating consequences of buck-breaking cannot be understated. 
Enslaved men who underwent this traumatic experience often faced long-lasting physical and psychological effects, including depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, and a profound sense of shame and emasculation. Many chose to end their lives, while others attempted to escape the horrors of slavery, never to return. Number 3. Breeding Farms During the time of the abolitionist movement, when efforts were being made to curtail the transatlantic slave trade and emancipate enslaved individuals, plantation owners faced a significant challenge. The reduction in the number of slaves being imported and the rise of abolitionist sentiments led to a shortage of labor on plantations. Desperate to maintain their economic interests and meet the market demands for their produce, plantation owners resorted to creating breeding farms. Breeding farms were specifically designed to exploit the sexuality of enslaved African men. These men, chosen for their physical strength and reproductive potential, were subjected to unimaginable sexual abuse. The conditions on breeding farms were abhorrent. Enslaved men were made to engage in sexual acts with multiple women every day, with the aim of increasing the likelihood of impregnation. This systematic breeding of slaves often forced incest upon slave families. Slaves were given hoods or bags over their heads to keep them from knowing who they were having forced sex with. It could be someone they know, perhaps a niece, aunt, sister, or their own mother. The breeders only wanted a child that could be sold. This disturbing practice naturally broke the psyche of slave families as this forced incest tainted the boundaries they kept with family. While specific dates and names regarding individual breeding farms may be difficult to obtain due to the nature of slavery, there are accounts and testimonies that reveal the existence of such establishments and the heinous acts perpetrated within them. These testimonies provide us with glimpses into the dark realities endured by enslaved African men. For example, in the memoir, Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, an American slave, Douglas mentions witnessing enslaved men being forced to engage in sexual acts for the purpose of breeding. He speaks of the anguish and pain he observed in these men, highlighting the dehumanizing nature of their experiences. Another account of slave breeding was detailed by a man named Charles Ball, who was enslaved in Maryland during the early 19th century. Ball provides a first-hand account of the horrors of the slave breeding system in his memoir, Slavery in the United States a narrative of the life and adventures of Charles Ball. He describes the cruel separation of families, with children torn from their parents' arms and sold off to distant plantations. Such wrenching scenes unfolded in numerous breeding farms across the South, where the basic rights and dignity of enslaved individuals were systematically violated. The infamous Pierce Butler, a plantation owner from South Carolina, operated one of the most notorious slave breeding farms known as Butler Island Plantation. Located on the Sea Islands, this plantation stood as a chilling symbol of the commodification of human life. Butler openly engaged in the business of slave breeding, viewing enslaved individuals as mere chattel to be bought, sold, and bred at will. The suffering and dehumanization inflicted upon those unfortunate souls who endured life on Butler Island serve as a haunting testament to the depths of human cruelty. While historical records may be limited, the narratives and testimonies of formerly enslaved individuals provide invaluable insights into the horrors they endured. Frederick Douglass and Charles Ball, whose narratives were previously mentioned, provide powerful accounts of the indecent exploitation faced by enslaved African men and women. Their writings offer first-hand perspectives on the dehumanizing practices perpetrated by white slave owners, including forced sexual encounters and the resulting emotional and physical traumas experienced by the victims. Number 2. Castration and Genital Mutilation Enslaved African men were seen as a constant sexual threat to white masters due to their strength, vitality, and potential to challenge the hierarchical power structure. The fear of rebellion, coupled with the perceived sexual prowess of African men, fueled the white master's desire to exert control over their bodies and eliminate any potential threats to their authority. One of the most abhorrent methods employed was castration, which served as a form of punishment, subjugation, and psychological control. Enslaved men were often castrated in response to alleged sexual transgressions, such as being caught in bed with a white master's wife or daughter. 
This brutal act aimed to emasculate and dehumanize the individual while asserting the dominance of the white master. Historical records and personal testimonies provide chilling accounts of the castration of enslaved African men. For example, in 1822, an enslaved man named Cato was castrated in Georgia after being accused of having an affair with a white woman. Such acts were not isolated incidents, but rather widespread practices that aimed to instill fear and deter any resistance. Enslaved men who demonstrated leadership qualities or were involved in rebellious activities were particularly targeted for castration. By stripping them of their reproductive abilities, white masters sought to undermine their authority and diminish their perceived threat. Men who organized and led slave revolts or rebel groups were labeled as women in an attempt to degrade and demoralize them. The castration and mutilation of African men served to crush their spirit, strip them of their pride, and erase their sense of identity. These acts were meant to assert white dominance and control over the bodies and sexuality of enslaved individuals. By targeting the reproductive capabilities of enslaved men, White masters aim to diminish their role as fathers, husbands, and protectors within their communities, further destabilizing familial and social structures. Number 1. Entertaining Sex Throughout the history of slavery, white supremacists, wealthy merchants, and aristocrats frequently treated enslaved men as sexual objects, denying them agency over their own bodies and reducing them to mere instruments of pleasure. These men were stripped of their dignity and humanity, forced to endure a wide array of sexual abuses and acts of degradation. One particularly degrading practice was the public display of enslaved men's bodies for the amusement of white viewers. These men were often made to line up naked, their sexual organs exposed as they were scrutinized, laughed at, and discussed by their white masters and spectators. This blatant objectification served to reinforce the notion of African men as subordinate, lesser beings, and perpetuated a culture of white dominance and black subjugation. Enslaved African men were also subjected to forced sexual acts with enslaved women, often under the guise of entertainment. In these extreme cases, an enslaved man would be forcibly made to engage in sexual intercourse with an enslaved virgin in front of a white audience. This grotesque spectacle aimed to satisfy the voyeuristic desires of white viewers, who derived pleasure from witnessing the sexual degradation and humiliation of both the man and the woman involved. These acts were not only an expression of power and control, but also a means to perpetuate racist stereotypes about African masculinity and hypersexuality. While specific data and names of individuals involved in these acts may be difficult to ascertain due to the intentional suppression of such information, Personal accounts from formerly enslaved individuals provide valuable insights into the reality of their experiences. For example, the narratives of Frederick Douglass and Solomon Northup, two prominent figures who escaped slavery and later documented their experiences, contain disturbing accounts of exploitation endured by enslaved African men. It is crucial to acknowledge that the abuse and exploitation of enslaved African men were not isolated incidents but rather systemic and pervasive aspects of the institution of slavery. The sexualization of these men was rooted in the dehumanization inherent in the slave system, where they were treated as property and denied the basic rights afforded to free individuals. The purpose of these acts was to reinforce white supremacy, maintain control over enslaved individuals, and perpetuate a culture of racial dominance. By confronting the painful history of indecent exploitation endured by enslaved African men, we can strive for a more comprehensive understanding of the atrocities committed during the era of slavery. This knowledge allows us to acknowledge the resilience and strength of those who suffered under such brutal conditions and serves as a reminder of the importance of combating racism and promoting equality in our society today. As always, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to our channel and share our videos to let more people know the truth about blacks and to hear their own part of the narratives. Thanks for watching.